Okay, so I have R Studio open here. Um, you should see something like this when you have it open. Remember to follow along. Uh, so remember you downloaded R version 3.3.1. This is the most recent one, uh, playfully called Bug in Your Hair. And so anyway, we're going to start out by opening a file that I prepared for you guys. So you can do that by cl clicking on File, Open File, and navigating over to wherever it is. Um, um, easier way perhaps, remember I told you that you can sync up the Google Drive to your computer. So um, I have this icon for a Google Drive and I'm just going to click on open Google Drive folder and go in and find our intro and this is the file I want to open and if I double click it then it will open in our studio and here's this file that I want you guys to play with. Um, so what this is called, this is called an R notebook. It is um, a file that has interspersed text that explains what's going on the, in the code. So that would be whatever's in the, these white regions. And then that's interspersed with actual code. So that's what is enclosed in these little R brackets with three quotes in the gray regions. Those are called code chunks. All right, so the nice thing about this is that I can uh, preview what an output file from this thing looks like. So to do that, I go here to preview, preview notebook. And something like this should have then appear on the right side of your screen. Um, I think it may depend on, so if you click on this clear, uh, gear here, you may uh, change what it's, it says here for what I have the setup I have here, you would click on preview and viewer pane. So what you can see now is this is like the, um, you know, the pretty version of what I have here. These are like the, this is like the guts of what I have for here on the right. Um, and so you can see, uh, yeah, the code chunks are appearing in gray and then the explanations are in the white. Um, there are some possibly unfamiliar symbols you'll see in the text that accompanies the code. This is um, something called Markdown, and so um, don't worry about that so much, but you can see there's conventions, for instance, for saying, oh, let me put a link in there. What I want you to concentrate on, though, is what's in the gray chunks. Um, so right now you can see this is what our, um, our output, or this is actually an HTML file, what it looks like. And so what we can do now is, as it says in this file, to try executing the chunks. So all I have to do to do that is hit this little play button. And so this is going to run whatever I code, whatever code I have in there. This, in this case, plot cars. So let's do that. I'm clicking on a play. And you can see it produces this nice plot. Um, that's not appearing in the preview right now because I would have to update it. Um, in order for it to reflect what I've run here. So if I hit a uh, preview again, then you can see now it's updated and shows what I've done. All right, so um, that's just to give you, give you an example of what it's like to run a code chunk. Um, just to show you how you can do it, you can add a new chunk um, by, for instance, clicking here, insert, um, chunk, uh, insert a new R chunk you would want to do, and you can see now I could type, for instance, plot, um, let's say, plot iris. This is another built-in data set in R. Now I can run the code chunk by um, hitting run current chunk, or I can use the keyboard shortcut command shift enter. This might be control shift enter for PC users, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And hey, it's another nice fun plot. And again, it won't get updated here unless I hit the preview here again. All right, so that's just some playing. Um, so now let's actually start using R as a calculator. So um, we can add numbers. So here's an example of adding up two numbers. So I can run this code chunk again with the uh, Shift Command, Enter, 
and you can see it's going to add the two, two numbers. 2 plus 53 is 55. Um, as I say here, and as you can see also in the pretty output, this sort of one you see appear here, that's just R telling us that, oh, we have a list of numbers we outputted, and there's just one. And um, so don't con get confused by what that one is. That's all it is. Let me just hit preview again so you can see that now the preview is being updated with um, the output that I just did. All right, so suppose you want to input a list of numbers into R. The way you do this is by typing C and then parentheses, and then inside the parentheses you have the numbers separated by commas. So this, for instance. I can run this code chunk, let me just hit play, and you can see R is just returning the list I just um, gave, it, gave to it. So let's say that these are the durations in milliseconds of all the words we have in an audio file. And so if we want to figure out how long the audio file is in total, we could add up the numbers using the sum command. Right, so um, how do we do that? Well, it turns out R has a built-in sum command. A built-in sum command, and we can use that. Um, below, R also has a built-in mean command to calculate the mean or average of the durations. We can use that as well. Um, so one thing I want to show you here in the code chunk is we can either execute the code line by line or all lines at once. So to do it just line by line, I can just do command enter. Uh, for PC, it's probably control enter, so command enter, and you can see the sum is being calculated and it's 2558. And then let me move to this line with my cursor and let's do it again. And now we can say, ah, um, 511.6 is the mean. Or I could just be in this chunk and I do shift and enter and then I get both outputs at once. All right. So, you know, suppose I was trying to do a bunch of calculations with these durations, it would be pretty annoying if I had to keep on typing it over and over again, and I might make typos, and maybe later I would realize, oh, I made a mistake in prot, and this 729 should actually be 735. And oops, I have to change that in every time I type this. Well, that would really suck. Um, what it's better to do instead is to assign the durations to a variable. So like we do in this code chunk, we assign this list of numbers, the durations, to a variable we'll call durations. And uh, we can do that using this equal sign. So durations, let's assign this list of numbers to durations. All right, I'm going to run the code chunk, press the play button. Doesn't look like anything's happening. That's just because we're assigning something to a variable, so there's nothing related to output. But if we want to print what's stored in this variable durations, we can use the print command. And let me run that using the keyboard command, and voila, there's our list again. And now we can refer to this variable and calculate the mean and sum again. And we don't have to type that whole list again like we were doing um, before. We can just type durations. I'll run the whole chunk and we get the same answers as before, 511.6 and 2558, like up here. Um, let me update our preview, and you can see we have our uh, outputs now uh, calculated here, here.